Hi, my name is Riley Cooper, and I did my persona project on Henry Becquerel. So Antoine Henry Becquerel was born in Paris on December 15, 1852. Um, for the past three generations of the Becquerel family, um, they were all physicists and had an interest in phosphorescence and fluorescence, which is what um, inspired Becquerel to do the same. Um, he received his formal scientific training at the Ecole Polytechnique, where he became a leading scientist along with his father. So something that kind of sparked his interest and really his findings was the discovery of the X-ray. Um, the X-ray was discovered by Wilhelm Rottingen, and so this was an accidental discovery. Um, this being because he was testing if cathode rays um, could pass through glass and he would cover the cathodes um, in black paper. And so even though they were covered in black paper, a light was produced and showed up on a fluorescent screen. Um, and it would pass through the substances and leave the shadows of the solid objects behind. And then they soon found out, you know, you could do this on like human hands and body parts. And so this helped form Becquerel's hypothesis for his findings as well. And so what Becquerel thought, he thought that like through his father's findings, he found out that uranium was a very um, phosphorescent substance. So he decided to perform his own experiments using uranium potassium double sulfate crystal. Um, so yeah. So what he did, the experiment that he did, he took the uranium um, crystals and would put them on the side of a photosensitive plate, which was made out of gelatin and um, similar bromide. And so he wrapped them into two th layers of thick, like very opaque black paper, making sure to prepare them without exposing it to sunlight. But then he would take that sample and then expose the whole package to sunlight for several hours and then when he would develop them the shadow of the phosphorescent substance was seen so similar to the x-rays so there happened to be another accidental discovery so he decided that he was going to prepare the experiment again. So he prepared two new, or he prepared a new photosensitive plate and planned to expose it to sunlight. But because there was cloudy weather, he decided that he was just gonna come back to it and he put the samples in a dark drawer. So when he took them out, he still decided to develop them. And there are many people who wonder why he decided to do this. Um, many people theorize that it's just out of pure cur curiosity and his like need for knowledge about the substance that he decided to develop it anyways. Or maybe it was just because he had to report his findings by a certain day. People don't really know, but he decided to develop them and if he wouldn't have, he wouldn't have discovered this. So when he developed them, he found out there was an image of the phosphorescent substance anyways, and it turned out to be like a clear image of the substances. And so this made him realize that there's something else going on that doesn't have to be um, shown to sunlight. So he called this unknown radiation as Becquerel radiation. So a fun fact that I don't think many people know, know is that this was not such a new discovery because 40 years earlier, um, Abel Nipis de Saint Victor, a uh, photographer, this um, had sort of the same discovery. Some of the chemicals, including uranium, had exposed his um, photographic paper. And when this happened, nobody really thought much of it. It wasn't, you know, thought to have needed further analysis. So no one investigated this any further until Becquerel's discovery. Um, something else that he discovered was that um, radiation from these new rays 
can ionize gases, which then can be measured using a gold leaf electroscope. And so what a gold leaf electroscope is, it consists of this brass disc right here with this insulator plug and a gold leaf at the bottom, all like encased in this glass case. And so what happens is that the gold is malleable so it can be hammered into sheets. And so when there is a positively charged um, rod, the gold leaf will repel the rod due to positive charges attract or repelling each other there since they would both be positive. And so um, radiation in a charged electroscope ionizes gases causing the charge on the leaf to decrease gradually. And so the rate at which the gold leaf returns to its uncharged um, level or state is, can be used to then measure how much radiation was there in the first place. Um, so Henry Becquerel had a new student named Marie Curie. And so what she decided to do was to repeat his experiments and she got way more accurate results um, so thanks to Becquerel's discovery, it kind of led, it created that clue that led Pierre and Marie Curie to their discovery, um, which is very important. And turns out Becquerel actually carried radium purified by the Curies in his pocket and received a burn. The same thing actually happened to Pierre. He also received a burn. Um, and this was from, also from barium chloride 14. And so this actually, which I'll explain this a little bit later in my um, further slides, but this um, was very important because one, we didn't really know like the adverse effects of radiation at this time. And two, we didn't know how to utilize it either when they actually would learn to utilize the um, effect it does to your skin to suppress tumors in future nuclear medicine. So towards the end of his life, Henry Becquerel received the Nobel Prize with the Curies. He got half, they each got a fourth, um, for physics in 1903 for his, his discovery of spontaneous radioactivity. And then not long after, only five years later, he died of cardiac arrest at the early age of 55 in um, Western France. And it turns out his son, um, also continued studies with um, phosphorescence and fluorescence. So then that makes four generations of the Becquerels that contributed um, to this science. Um, another contribution that he had was the Becquerel. And so this, the Becquerel became one of the units to measure radioactivity in his honor. It actually measures ionizing radiation from decay. Um, one Becquerel represents a rate of radioactive decay equal to one disintegration um, per second. So the Becquerel is the S1 unit of radioactivity. Um, see in this like graphic right here, ionizing radiation strength decreases with the distance it's traveled, um, plus also other factors like blocking it, can absorb it or scatter it. And also just a note that like physical doses measured in grays and biological is in sieverts. So um, they kind of all correlate with one another, but the Becquerel was named to honor Henry Becquerel. And so he had a very lasting impact on the discovery of radioactivity. Um, if it wasn't for him, Marie Curie wouldn't have discovered uh, radi or named radioactivity. Um, he set the framework for radiology and nuclear medicine, like I said before, the skin burn that he received um, then suggested that the biological effect of radium could be used for suppressing tumors and also, you know, led to um, the discovery of the adverse effects of radiation, how you shouldn't be exposed um, that much. And then more than 20 years after the first therapeutic use of radiation, um, before the radio materials would then be used in a nuclear medicine application. So meaning that um, 
this kind of sparked nuclear medicine as well. And then of course the Becquerel, it being named after him. And that's the end of my presentation, thank you.